Hey, Kathy. Hey, Michael. How are you? I'm doing good. Safe trip back to San Antonio, I get. Yep. Yep. No problems. Awesome. I was hoping we wouldn't have any turbulence or storms or anything, but nope. Smooth sailing in and out. Great. All right. I see Gail's come back for more. Gail <laughs> likes us. <laughs> I do. I really do. I enjoy these. I'm learning a lot. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Nice now to I see feel. you again, Taylor. Hi there. Hmm. Good to be back again. Michael, oh, I'm going to record today's session. Yep, I saw that. Okay. Yeah, it's nice to be back in my own studio and not in my parents' basement. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where all your tricks of the trade were. Yeah, I know. So now I've got my ring light and I've got my nice big microphone and I've got my cameras. So no more cookie tray. <laughs> no, I think it was a it was a big box. Um, oh, you mean that? Yeah. For those. <laughs> no. Yeah. And I, I had my stuff on on uh, Amazon boxes and everything kind of just jury rigged and moved around and stuff. And Hey, it worked out great. It did. Hi, Gail. Hi. Hi, Gail. Gail. How and you doing? Gail. Gail and Gil. Oh, yeah, that's so. interesting, huh? And Terry, I see you're here. You want to wait another minute, Michael, or shall we go? No, we can wait a bit. Okay. This is kind of the song, this, the swan song. This is the last one. This is your last hoorah. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, is former there, military, I can't help myself. Song and dance at the end? What's that? Is there going to be a song and dance at the end? <laughs> Only if you do it. <laughs> we'll leave that up to you. I saw this thing and send it to my kids today. It says tablets were replaced by scrolls. Scrolls were replaced by books. Now we scroll through books on tablets. <laughs> oh, that's come full circle. That is so true though. <laughs> it is really sad, but true. All right. We had such a big group on Monday. I figured the group today would be a little bit smaller, but let me get the chat opened. In this, case. this is with the pros, so you you know this is <laughs> true. True. Yeah, sure, sure. Michael, you want to check the screen? Make sure you got. You bet. You're good. Woohoo! Let me get TV land situated. So that I can see everyone that's in there. Okay, let me get the chat up. So if anyone is too shy to just blurt out and interrupt me, they can drop a note in the chat. Okay, and then I've got that in there. All right, I think I'm good to go. So I'll just okay, introduce well, myself, Kathy. Okay, go ahead, right ahead. Oh, no, you can you can say welcome to everybody. I'll just introduce myself. I was just going to say welcome to Canvas Hour and Michael Clayton and Canvas Studio. All right. Hello, everyone. So uh, this is part two um, of what used to be two parts crammed into one at half the time. Um, I asked Kathy Botero if I could go through and extend them a little bit. And, and Suzanne Hall said that'd be great as well. And so last week, what we talked about was the different things you could do within video. Um, but what we're going to talk about today is just what we can do inside of Canvas with video. And so, you know, with Blackboard and its limitations, you know, you could drop in links, you could embed video and different things like that. But Canvas Studio goes a little bit further for us um, in giving us a couple more tools that we can use to uh, implement a video and insert that into our courses. 
So Canvas Studio is a standalone product that can be added into Canvas, and our university has opted to add that feature that gives us a platform inside of Canvas in order to store video and also to create video, uh, both through screen capture and through uh, webcam capture. Uh, we can do lots of, of different things with, with video. So um, what I've done here is I've created a little bit Oh, let me start out here. So in the spring of 2021, uh, when we all hopped back on Canvas again, um, and we were able to use it as uh, our, our Canvas pilot group, I noticed that there was a, a little button uh, on the interface, and it's right there. It's this icon that is a, a video icon with little lines coming out the bottom of it. And that is the icon for Canvas Studio. So if you click on that icon, what it gives you is it gives you a screen that it's where you organize your videos. Um, you can upload videos individually uh, and you can also put them into collections. Uh, collections can be by topic, uh, they can be by class, uh, they can be by however you want to, want to sort them. This right here is just a way to organize those, those video files. Um, so in my example here, I have them organized by course uh, so that I can keep them, uh, keep them together. Once you go inside of a collection, like I have mine by courses, you can see that it gives us a, uh, a stacked view of different videos that we have. Now in the, in the realm of user interface, we call these little things cards. So there is a card for each video, and you see that it has a thumbnail of the video. It has the time code of how long that video is. It also tells you the title of the video, uh, the person who uploaded it, and then it has three dots that contain other things in the menu underneath. And we'll talk about a few of those um, as we move through uh, this this afternoon. So wonderful way to organize your videos, uh, simple to upload and simple to create. So let's just get started and dive into some of the things of the features of Canvas Studio. Um, when you go into a video, you're gonna see that there's lots of different options um, that you have uh, inside of individual videos. So I've created a bit of a punch list uh, to go through today to talk to you about some of the features um, that, that we have uh, in there. So we've got insights, comments, captions, playback speed, simple integration into your pages and quizzes and other assignments, uh, how to add a video, um, how to make a quiz from a video, a recording video, and then even using video as feedback for students uh, in their assignments. So I like to, I don't save the best for last. I wanna put that feature right up front. So what I love the most about Canvas Studio is this feature called Insights. Now, you know, I have a YouTube channel that I upload some software demos to and things like that. And when I've got a video that's up and it's got maybe 25 or 100 or 300 views, I feel really down because that's a small fraction of the entire world. But when I'm in stream and I upload a video, all I have is a clicker count of how many people have watched the video. Now, if I have 16 views in a class of 18, I've got 95% of my world watching my video. But in Canvas, we can go a little bit further with that. If you take a video and upload it into Canvas Studio and place it into a page, it will actually track the people in your class and whether or not they have A, watched it, or B, and B, what parts of the video did they watch? So as you can see for this video, for this, uh, this uh, drawing assignment that I did for my, my image lab class, um, I've got 16 students registered in the course. And you can see that it gives me a bar chart that tells me how many views each little time breakdown had. So what this tells me is on average, I had about 15 people view the, the video um, but I also have varying levels of viewership, which means that some students may have skipped around when watching the video. So up front, it gives me a bird's eye view of what the class did. Now, what I can do is I can click on the individual students and you can see that D watched it once and watched it all the way through from start to finish. But then Fee 
I, you know, about halfway through started to skip around and maybe jump to what they perceived to be were the important parts. And then we have someone who skipped other parts of the of the video. Now, I wouldn't say that this goes so far as to have you judge your content as whether it's good or not, because different students are going to skip around in different parts of the video. But it's really eye opening to see the kind of dead spaces between the different uh, viewerships of the of the students. Or you might get a student like this who just didn't watch it at all, right? But then again, because you know the student hasn't watched it, you can drop a note to them to say, hey, I notice you haven't watched the video yet. Please make some time this evening to watch it before class tomorrow. Or maybe they totally understand what you did the first time. And so they don't need to come back and, and, and view that again. Um, so insights are little analytics that we can use to see who watched it, how many times they watched it, and how much of that have they watched. Um, getting into other screens, I don't have a screenshot it here, but I had a student who I could tell was going back and re-watching parts of the video to understand things better because they had a view that was 100% all the way across, but then in certain parts it jumped two or three times. So I could see they went back and reviewed to try to find some other concepts and, and get clarifications for things they might not have, have seen before. So insights is really kind of cool uh, to be able to track that kind of information. Um, now this is tracked on a per class basis. So if you have two sections of the same course and you put a video into each section, it will track that class individually from the other class so that you can get analytics separately um, for, for those two. Um, so if you were to create a video of you introducing a general syllabus um, and you know just talking about the policies of attendance and grading and stuff like that, you could create that video, upload it, and place it into each of your classes and have analytics captured for each one of those courses. Okay, so just in kind of thinking of, of how this might be of, of a practical use. Okay, insights, fantastic analytics, just really simple right off the top. We can't go any deeper into it, but that does give us enough to kind of get a general idea of, of what folks are doing. Okay, any ideas of insight or any questions about insights? And Michael, I think this is great. The only thing I'm curious of is if I were to put my PowerPoints in there, how much space would that take up? I'm, I'm not real computer savvy though. You know, I'm a trained monkey and I train very well, but I know we are only allowed just so many space, just so many spaces. So let's say I have about 20 minutes worth of PowerPoints for each week. Okay. How, how what is that going to look like in the space that I would take up for it? All right, so that's a good question, Gail. So when you say you've got a PowerPoint, that means you've recorded yourself giving the PowerPoint. It's not right. a, it's not a, um, a PowerPoint file they download and do on their own. It's a video no, no. giving lecture. No. Mm -hmm. So we can call it a captured lecture. Okay. So one of the interesting things about this, and, and I'm glad that Kathy jumped in because, you know, I've repented of my ways. Um, Canvas Studio has a limited amount of space mm -hmm. per faculty member within Canvas Studio. You don't have as much space as you have, say, over in, in Microsoft Stream, right? Mm -hmm. So what I my rule of thumb is, if it is something that I, I need to track, that I'm really curious as to whether or not students are actually seeing a concept, um, I will make my video short. And I'm talking less than 10 minutes. And I will put that in there. And I, um, you know, going on from last week, when I talked about resolution of videos, if you keep your resolution to 1080p or to 720p, if it's just a slideshow, you can really reduce the file size down to where you have a 20 minute video that may only be 150 megs. But if you're capturing it through some other way, uh, it could be as big as a gig and a half, which would totally destroy your, your, your file space that you have for that. So what I say, and, and this is, is with Kathy's blessing, is small, simple videos that help to get a direct point across are perfect for what this is. Mm -hmm. If you are recording a half an hour or a 40-minute lecture for your students, 
put that over into stream and then drop a link in. You won't be able to have the analytics that it has inside of Canvas Studio, but it will be there for students to do. And I, and I say that really only in asynchronous situations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it, if it is, uh, if it is a, a synchronous course, um, then put that stuff over into, into, can, into stream because the students should be in class. They should hear it the first time yeah. and that's it. But having it over in stream, they can go through and watch it again. But uh, if it is an asynchronous course and it is a pointed thing, you want to know if students are paying attention to snip that, you know, take your, take your 20 minute PowerPoint and cool. put the whole thing over in stream but then snip out the little part you want them to make sure they know about and put that into Canvas okay. Studio. Because um, I have I have like maybe three or four PowerPoints, but each one is only about oh, three, three to five minutes long is what each one of them is. But it's a total, it would be a total of about 20 minutes. Does so that make doing, sense what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, if you do 20 minutes and you're talking about 20 minutes a week for 15 weeks, what well, that's five hours worth of stuff, you know, mm -hmm. by the time it's done. Now, if you times that by, you know, four sections that you're teaching that are all different, then yeah, your space is going to get swallowed up very, very easily. Um, okay. When I, when I was talking about this on, on Monday's uh, session, you know, someone said, well, what if I had the video up there for a few weeks and then I took it down? Well, by taking it down, you'd have to delete it from Canvas Studio to free the space back up. Uh -huh. At that point, you know, Insights here isn't supposed to be this godsend that helps us to big brother our students. You know, put those longer format videos over into stream and bring a link in. But as okay. I said, if there's something short that you need to have analytics on, um, like you're, you're discussing something for a, a, a review for a, a quiz or for a project or or in introducing a project or something like that, then, then bring that in. But because of the limited space, for me, anything over 10 minutes, I put over into stream. Anything that the student is using as a review, I put it over into stream. Okay. Great, thanks. Welcome. And also one of the things that um, I'm talking to, to Susan about is um, having a course sometime this fall where we talk about compressing video to make them smaller so that you can utilize your space better. Um, and so once we do something like that, then you can go through and you know create smaller versions of those uh, bigger files and it won't take up nearly as much space in, in those things. Okay. Well, good, Kathy's not correcting me on anything, so I must have said things that are true. Now she's looking for the unmute button. It was eloquent and nicely done, All Michael. Right, I right. couldn't have said it better. Yeah. yeah. No, I, thank I, you so much. I filled up my canvas face really quickly one time. And uh, yeah, I learned the errors of my ways. <laughs> we have, how much space do we have over in stream? Isn't it like five oh, it's, it's per person or something? Oh yeah, it's millions. You'll never ever hear from us if you have your things in stream. You'll, you can put them in there all night long. It's kind of like OneDrive. And then it's inside of Canvas Studio, it's just what two gigs, right, right, right in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two gigs. Yeah. Is, two gigs is about what we have for each person in um, yeah. Studio. For a person, for a per person, person uh -huh. in Canvas. That's not per okay. course. So you'd have to judiciously spread your stuff across all the courses and things like that. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. I'm actually. One of the things about Canvas, and this isn't part of this at all, but I have my students uh, turn in their files in Canvas, and I came into situations where students were filling their, their uh, because they're turning in large Photoshop files and things to me, um, I'm actually implementing something this spring or this fall where they will actually upload their stuff into OneDrive and then paste a link over for me, or just put it in OneDrive and then write a note saying in OneDrive, so I'm not gumming up uh, Canvas Studio. So, yeah, I had a bunch of students saying it wouldn't allow me to upload it because they had filled up their space and it wouldn't allow them to, to put it in there. Okay. So, all right. So that, you bet. That is Canvas Studio. Now, these analytics are only for instructors. Students can't see uh, this, this information. All right. Um, so, yeah. So comments. Uh, comments are a really interesting feature uh, inside of videos inside of, of Canvas. 
So if you take a video and you insert it into a page, um, what it will actually do is it will, um, it'll show you the, 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 the video, but it will put a threaded discussion thing underneath. So, and if you look at the image that I've got on here on the screen, you'll see some, some dots along the way of the progress bar. Those are where comments were left in the video. So a student could be watching the video and get down to a place now have a question on, and they can just go into the comments and they can add a comment. And that comment is time coded. And if you look at the individual comment, you'll see at the far right that there is 1601 or 29.01. That means that's where the comment was left um, as they go across and it stays um, and it stays threaded. So if a student replies to that comment, or you reply to a student's comment, it won't just kick it down to the bottom of the list like a chat. It will actually thread it into the, into the discussion um, as it moves down. In this case, I turned comments on for this because I made a mistake and I had to go back and correct myself. Um, but it was cool. And it, it really does help out to be able to see uh, where, those, where those comments are. Um, and it warms my heart when I come into a class and I look at the video and I see that lots of folks um, have now, you know, started talking about something. Um, and you can even set up your notifications. So if a, not if a comment comes in on a video, it will email you or, or text you or notify you somehow. So you can immediately go answer it rather than, um, you know, having to check on it manually uh, and, and stuff like that. So that's comments, very simple. And I'll show you how to turn those on when we insert a video later on in the, in the hour. So next we have is captions. And captioning inside of, of um, Canvas is, is pretty cool. Now, this is where I'm going to go plug Stream again. Um, like I said, Stream is great for those long format recorded classes or recorded lectures for students to go back and review. And Stream has some really awesome captioning and transcript uh, features. As soon as you upload the video, it automatically starts creating the captions for it. And as you, as you watch it, you can see it tick down in a list on the side of the video. Or if you turn on the captions button, it'll actually play over the top of the video. And you can go in and edit it and fix it. It's awesome. It's fantastic. Canvas doesn't quite do it that well, but it does have some features that, that you can use. So in this example, um, I've got this video here and I have gone into my captions tab and I have said, I'd like it to have English captions. And then I tell it to start the captioning process. So the captioning process happens server side. It's not anything you have to be involved in. It just takes a little bit of time based upon how long the video is in order for uh, the captions to generate. Now you can go into the captions and make corrections and things like that, but it does not have that same transcript feature on the side like Stream does. Um, so it just does has that little bit of, a, of an overlay. Now the cool thing is, is it will allow you to upload captions in other languages. So if you have a video that's in English and you wanna add a Spanish caption to it, you can type out the Spanish captions and then upload it into the system and it will identify it as the different languages that are there. It's not anything that'll translate it. It's not gonna like Google Translate, take your English and translate it into another language, um, but it will accept other, other uh, things. So there are some, there are some textbooks and, and built classes these days that when you buy them or purchase them like labs and things like that, they may come with language packs. And you can upload those language packs into uh, Canvas Studio as you upload videos and, and different things like that. So that's where uh, those kind of, of captioning things uh, come into, into play. So again, we have this wonderful little CC button that's standard in, in most video players, and that will allow you to turn the captions off or to choose the language you want to have. Now, what I find really interesting about Canvas is the Canvas um, uh, captions are unintrusive. They are often, they're white with a transparent black background. Uh, 
and they never change size. And I'm not quite sure how to go through and change size. Someone asked me that question on Monday, but I haven't looked up the answer yet to that. So even when you look at it full screen, the captions are still just the same tiny size that they, that they have uh, up above. Um, I'm pretty sure that if you were to go into the Canvas community thing and ask about increasing the text size for captions, that's probably the easiest thing to do to try to figure out. And me knowing Terry, he's probably typing that in right now to see if caption size can be increased. And if he's not, he's going to start or maybe after he's done with this game of solitaire. Right, Terry? Okay, you don't have to answer. <laughs> All right. So again, captions. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I was muted and playing solitaire. Oh, okay. That's I just threw you <laughs> under the bus, so don't worry about that. Uh, well, I, I heard that part. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so anyway, that's how captions work. Just the same as they do in YouTube and on stream and, and as far as being visual uh, and, and stuff like that. So next, playback speed. So much like in any other video player, there is a place where students that are pressed for time can speed up and slow down the video. Um, if you have a professor that talks too fast, go ahead and slow it down a little bit so that you can get through that information. Or if there's one that talks too slow, you can speed it up one and a half or two times, um, different things like that. This does not have any play um, in the insights. It says just as if it were a playthrough. It's not going to skip every other blue line to let them let you know that they listen to it that quickly. Uh, it's just a playback feature that's inside of, of the Canvas Studio Player um, so that folks can, can have that, um, that option. Okay. All right. So that's just the little one X can be changed to anywhere from half speed to one and a half speed to, to two speed. Simple integration. So we've uploaded a video into, uh, into Canvas Studio. I want to put it into my uh, assignment, into my page, into my um, quiz, into wherever I want to put it. Again, so here is a page. This is a sample page um, of an, an assignment. Um, and I have this video in here, this little nine and a half minute video that talk about the steps they're supposed to take for that assignment. Um, so let me go ahead and hit the edit button. And now I'm in edit mode on that assignment and I've removed the video or I'm ready to put it in. So I've done all the rest of my formatting for things like here's where, excuse me, this video goes and here's where another video goes. I just put my cursor where I want to insert the video into my, into my text box. And then I push this little button right here. You'll see that's the Canvas Studio icon. When you click on that button, it pops open a dialog box that goes directly to your collections. And you can go into your collections and identify the video that you want. And you simply mouse over it and click select. Once you do that, it opens it up into another dialog box and says, would you like to allow comments? Sure, I'd love to have comments in this video. Flip the switch. If you don't want comments at all, you can knock it the other way and not have, have any comments. You can also do a display download option. So if you want this to be a video that students can download and take with them as they're riding the bus or maybe while they're at work or something like that, you can, you can uh, give them the option to download the video. Now, my personal taste on this our take on this is I don't ever allow students to download my video. Um, if a student asks and sends me an email that says, look, I'm going to be traveling on the bus with my team this weekend. Can I download the video? Then, yeah, I'll let you download the video uh, at that point. Or I'll give them a link to a video file that they can download and then take with them. But other than that, I don't ever um, allow students to, to download the videos. I want to keep them nice and safe. Uh, from from them. And then at this point, you can go ahead and you can either embed that video or you can go back and select another video. But once you've embedded that video uh, and you click on the embed button, it pops it right inside of the of the window. 
um, and it's ready, it's ready to go. If you have turned on comments, you will be able to scroll down in this window and see all the comment stuff ready to go. But if you had comments turned off, all you will see is a, is a screen of the video. Yes, Gil, you got a question. Yeah, the presumption is that you have already uploaded the video as a file. Yes, yes. Okay. This, now, a little bit later on, we're going to talk about how easy it is to upload a video. Now, when a student sees the page, this is what it is that, that they're, are, they're going to see. Um, I've got the video in here. I've got the comments turned on so they can see these options underneath. And so now they can go through and they can uh, click on comments to view the comments or captions to view the captions, but the students won't see insights. That's only for instructors. Okay. All right. So this is the part that Gil's been waiting for inserting a video or adding a video. So when you're inside of Canvas Studio, again, clicking our little octopus icon over here, that's what I call it. Um, it takes us in here to our collections um, or our, our main library. I'm gonna call this the library. See, it says my library. If I wanna go through and add a video, I simply come up here into this corner and I click the add button. Now, when I click the add button, it's gonna pop up a dialog box, gives me two options. To add things to my library, I can either drag and drop a video onto this side of the window, or I can click the browse files and go through my desktop, find my video and upload it. Or if I want to bring something from YouTube and put it over into, uh, into Canvas, you just simply copy the URL of the YouTube video that you want and you add it into uh, your library. Now, how about stream? How would you copy it from stream? I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. Okay. And so um, now I'm going to tell you, I haven't had a lot of experience with copying YouTube videos over into, into Canvas. So if you want to look that up, um, whether it just embeds YouTube videos into Canvas and allows you to have the analytics, I don't know. Uh, or if it just copies the whole video over into it, um, I'll have to go through and, and, uh, and figure that out. That's something that I haven't done before. I should have for the context of this, but I've been avoiding it for four presentations already. Why not avoid it for one more? Okay. I got to give you guys something to look up and do. So you, you know, can feel empowered. All right. So let's go through and say that I've got a video that I want to upload that I've created myself. So I'm just going to take my video and drag and drop it over this happy cloud. What I get next is I get a card that has the name of the video file, the person who uploaded it, and then it gives us a progress bar of that video uploading. Once that video has been uploaded, the card will change to show three dots. And instead of a blank space in the bottom right-hand corner, it will actually have a circle, a circle bar that tells you it's processing. So one, you have to upload it, and then two, it has to process. Now, I know how, you know, sometimes in a perfect world, we plan ahead, days ahead, weeks ahead, but let's say that I, I finish the video right before class starts and I upload the video and it takes a while to upload. Oh man, that's gonna, am I gonna cut it close on the class? Oh. Oh yeah, I got the, it's uploaded, it's great. Oh no, now it's processing. <laughs> and depending upon the size of the video, it may take a while for it to process. Now, if you've gone through the upload and you've got the processing done and it actually shows you a thumbnail of the, of the video and you quickly drop it into the assignment and then you save everything and you run from your office to class and you tell your students about it, they all play the video and it's a crappy quality. Because what Canvas does is it goes through and it renders the video server side into different bandwidths of video so that if someone has a slower connection, it will deliver a lower quality video. If it has a middle of the road connection, they'll be able to get a mid quality video. And if they have a really good connection, they'll get the high quality video. So again, the server takes time to render each of those videos out so it'll deliver the best experience. 
because we don't want them delivering a full HD video to a student's phone. When a student will log in on their phone, they'll get served a video that matches the size of their screen. That's just how it, it holds back or it keeps track of bandwidth issues and different things like that. So rule of thumb, number one, prepare. Do it the day before, that's fantastic. Or if you have an afternoon class, doing it in the morning is okay. It takes probably about five to 10 minutes per two minutes of video uh, in order for it to render through all that it needs to. Um, and since we're uploading short clips into Canvas Studio, it shouldn't take too long. Um, even over in stream, when you upload the video, it takes a while to process so the quality gets better and better as, as it goes, okay? So rule of thumb, plan ahead on your videos, make sure they're uploaded, um, make sure they're ready to go at least the day before, because then it'll have time to render everything out that it needs to and deliver the student the best experience. But I don't have to, I don't have to talk about, you know, being good and up to date. You guys are all awesome and have everything done like before the semester even starts, right? I'm just waiting for Dr. Hinojosa to just nod his head and go, I've been done for decades. <laughs> well, I was thinking of, while you were talking, I was thinking about videos that are embedded in PowerPoint, but that's completely different uh, and, and so on. So this is fine. I'm fine. It is. And that's the thing is, is when you, if you have a video inside of PowerPoint and you're capturing the PowerPoint, you're, you're just playing that video inside of a video. It's not like it's any inception thing going on. It's right. just recording flat what's on the screen. It's not like you can keep one video going while pausing the inside video. Yeah, it's just one flat, flat presentation all the way through. All right, sweet. Okay, the next thing on the punch list, and this is making a quiz. Now, some of you may have used something like Edpuzzle to go through and to use a video to build a quiz to put into Canvas. Um, now, I will tell you that I've never used Edpuzzle. I don't know how it works. I don't know what the limitations are or anything like that. Um, I'm a simpleton. Um, but you can make some really interesting quizzes using video inside of Canvas Studio. Now, when you're inside your collection, you can take, or inside your library, or inside of a collection, you can make a quiz from any video that you have. You just have to upload it first. And then in the three little dots for the menu that we call that an options menu, you'll see that the first option is create a quiz. Now the quizzes that you can create inside of Canvas are simple quizzes that have either multiple choice or true false is the answer because this needs to be an up or down kind of a thing because you can tell them that the video cannot proceed unless they get the question right. And they can go I back and re-answer the question a little bit later. Record my media, record, 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 one, two, three. Yeah, Terry, you, you're, you're not muted. Yeah, well. Okay, I just heard this record, 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 record. Uh, I'm, I'm checking something to see if we can prove your point. On what? On being able to, edit your uh increase the size of your text oh okay sweet all right so i'll ignore terry um and continue on and i'll mute myself okay thanks terry at your right. own risk huh you'll ignore terry at your own risk yeah <laughs> all right um so these quizzes um the way that i in in, in the the literature I've read and the way that teachers use this is often in some sort of a review case where there may be a video um, that they're talking about something and they may ask a, 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 a multiple choice question or a true false question to see if they've been paying attention to the concepts and things that are being taught. Um, so maybe if there is a um, so maybe if there is a, a presentation you're making on like the life cycle of a cell, right? It might be that you're going into, it says, when a cell divides, that's called, and it, the screen pauses and a box pops up and it says, you know, mitosis or whatever the other things might be. I'm not that big of a science person, but they could go through and then click the right one. 
And if it's correct, they can continue on watching the video. If not, it'll go back and they have to watch that again <laughs> and then, you know, and answer it again uh, to, to be able to, to continue on. So think about it in, in those. Now, these quizzes can be graded or ungraded. Uh, so you also have that if you want to use it as a review or actually use it as a quiz. So in the example that I have prepared for this presentation today, uh, in my web development classes, I teach them the basic 10 lines of code that it takes to have a valid HTML page. And so since we've done this every, every the beginning of every class uh, for weeks, I pop this little quiz in, which is them supposed to tell me what it is I'm supposed to do next. So I have this 10 lines of code video that I've uploaded and I'm choosing to create it as a quiz. And it pops up a dialog box that says, confirm video quiz settings. And I can go through and give it a true name for the quiz and I can give it a description. Um, now I can hide the markers from the timeline so the students don't know when the questions are gonna pop up or I can choose to give them a, a heads up of how many questions there might be um, throughout the video. But me being sneaky, I've got the check marks so that it hides the questions on the timeline. All right, take care, Kathy. All right, so um, I've got my video uploaded. I've got my description and title in there. I'm watching the video. And when it gets to a certain point, I click on the video and I add my question. So this question is going at 13 seconds in and the question pops up, what is the first line of code? And then I give them three options to choose. I can also add more options if I need to, but I'm just gonna leave it to three. And if the option is correct, it's going to tell them that is correct. If the option is, is if their answer is incorrect, it will tell them that it's incorrect. And now this is just a general, you got it right, you got it wrong. Or you can do a feedback regardless of answer um, in there. So, and you can even tell it to shuffle the choices so that the student doesn't say, hey, when you get to the video quiz, it's A, B, A, A, C, you know? So you can shuffle them up that way if, you're, if you want to, to give them a, a little bit of a mix up on that. So once you have that question and you click save, you're gonna see that it puts this little marker on the progress bar and you can go back and edit that if you'd like to. You can just click on it. It'll pop the same window open again and you can go through and edit it. So then I go further down the video and we get to the part where they're gonna be, what are we gonna do next? And I say, do we open the head next? And I just make that a true or false. And the thing is, it's false. We have to add something else before we get there. So it's not yet. We have to open the HTML first. And then, so that comes through and kind of does that. So I can add, like I said, questions along the video to see if they're paying attention or to review something that they, that they should already know. Once you're done and you embed, you put the, and you've, and you've got the, the quiz uh, and you've dropped that video in, when they get to the page, it will simply say, get started. I mean, I'm in a student view right now. So they will click get started. It'll go to a full screen video. And as the video plays along, when they get to a question, it'll pop up the dialog box. Do we open the head next? And the answer is false. And then it will go through and tell them, all right, now let's continue and, and let's go through. Again, you'll see there is a continue and a rewatch button. If they don't know the answer, want to rewatch it, they can hit rewatch. It will go back to the previous question and have them watch that segment again. It doesn't go back to the beginning. It just goes back to that last segment. <coughs> last question was, was asked. Okay. So again, using videos like this inside of Canvas Studio is meant to, you know, be simple things. Uh, you do have to record the video in the essence of giving a quiz. Um, yeah, it's just going to take a little bit of planning ahead. Uh, has anyone done a quiz uh, with video in Edpuzzle or another, another um, platform? Okay. Like I said, I don't use them a lot, 
but it is something that they use a lot in the K through 12 space um, for, for distance learning and things like that. Lucretia Fraga is very familiar with Ed Puzzle. Yep. And she was her thing this morning. Yeah, she did. She did a thing. She did on. have one this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, ask Lucretia and she can tell you everything about using videos as, as quizzes. All right. So let's move on. Now you can actually record video straight in uh, to Canvas Studio. Um, I know that in my first presentation uh, about video, we talked about ScreenFlow and Camtasia and, and uh, Streamlabs OBS and different ways of capturing video. Well, this is one of the options that you have for capturing video quickly uh, to use inside of, of Canvas Studio. So first I wanna talk about webcam capture just simply capturing things from your webcam in order to talk to your students whether it's to create an introduction to the course an introduction to the project um, to be used in feedback different things like that um, so it's really really simple again i'm back inside of my canvas library uh, or inside of canvas studio but instead of clicking the add button i click on the record button now, when you click on the record button, um, it's going to give you two options. One is a screen capture, and the second is a webcam capture. Now, I'm inside Safari. As a Mac person, I use Safari for a lot of the things I do. But when I click on the webcam capture button, it warns me that it doesn't work quite that well with Safari. So I must switch to either Chrome or to Firefox in order to use this feature. So, you know, as a web developer, I've got like nine browsers on my computer anyway. So I just click over to Chrome, go through the record button and boom, it opens up a nice little dialog box, has me confirm my camera and my microphone, and then I'm ready to go. You can see that it's just capturing my webcam uh, completely and I can set my mic, I can set my camera, and then I just click start recording. And it will give you a countdown and then you just talk into the mic and when you're done you click stop recording and you can give it a name and it will save it into canvas studio very very simple really simple i use it a lot like i said for introducing projects uh, introducing topics for classes different things like that these videos are never more than you know two minutes long so and because they're rendered uh, on the server you know, it, it doesn't take up too much space uh, when I do things like like that. So that is the webcam. Um, I had someone once say, well, can't I just, you know, video record myself on an app in my phone and then upload that video? Yes, you can. Um, there's nothing that says you have to use the webcam capture. It is just something there for for you to do. Can, um, can you use the clip that you recorded and uh, um, uh, put it into another with another clip? Like so, for example, like for example, I have a little I, I have a little welcome video that I did last year, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but using Zoom, and then I had another thing I had recorded, and I brought the. the the beginning and the end and the thing in the middle together in a, in a movie making class. Yeah, so Canvas Studio does not have any features that allow you to go through and edit the videos. So uh, in that case, Gil, you would have to record both videos going to your movie maker, put them both together and render out one video in order to upload. Okay. Um, but what I've done before is I just said, hey, here's two videos for you to watch. Watch the first one and then the second one. <laughs> and, I, and I embed the first one and then I put the second one right underneath it. Okay. That's okay. You know, whether they watch two one minute videos or one two minute video, it's six of one, half dozen of the other, literally right. you know, going through. So, yeah. And, and that's my downfall is sometimes I get so production heavy that I lose the immediacy of some of these things. You know, I want it to look right and be right and say the right thing. But then there are some days I'm just like, all right, let's just get this done. And then 
I use the webcam record and just record something very quick and drop it in. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. All right. Now we got screen capture. So if you've done screen capture before using Camtasia or ScreenFlow or Jing or Snagit or some other thing like that, this has the same kind of idea, but it is a web-based piece of software. Um, so when I'm in, now, now I'm inside of Firefox because I like to test things out some of these days. So I'm in Firefox, I click on record, but this time I choose screen capture. Now, when you do this for the first time, it will prompt your browser to uh, download a little plugin that allows the browser to do something. This is no, no harder than adding any other extension to a browser. You simply just click yes, yes, and agree, and it will go through and, and install it. So when you have it installed and you click on screen capture, it will uh, load up a little screen that says loading screen capture. And then this is what will happen. It will go through and show you your, your full screen and it will pop up three little floating boxes. The first box right here is the record box. Um, the record box is pops up out of the settings that's inside of the record strip right here. And you can see that you can tell it to record your, just your screen you can record just your webcam, or you can record both. You can choose what size of video you want to record. Do you want to record full screen, which by my monitor set here is at 1080p, so it knows, okay, I'm gonna record it at 1080p. But I can also say record my screen at half size, and it will make the video a little bit smaller. Then it will say, do you wanna use narration? Narration means an external microphone or the microphone that might be inside of your computer. Computer audio are the little bells and chimes and things that are inside of your operating system. Like when you get mail, you know, you hear that sound. Or when you click a button that's wrong, it might go ding or bong or something like that. Those are the computer audio noises that are there. So you can choose to say, you know what? They don't need to hear all of the clicks and whistles and whatnot. They just need to hear my voice. So you can turn off the computer audio and leave on the narration. That's what those two guys are right there. All right, so now that I've got my settings in here, I can go ahead and, oh, then this guy over here is the webcam. So it gives you a preview in the corner of what your webcam is looking at. And it says, you can, we can display this three ways. One is the webcam full screen over the top of the, of the screen captured one, or we can put it in the bottom left-hand corner, or we can turn the webcam off. Now this right here is just floating and will not be recorded with the full screen. This is just for your purposes. Because let's say that you're starting a presentation you can go through and click the first button here and introduce what you're talking about. Then right on the fly, you can click on the second button and it will show your screen and move you down to the bottom right-hand corner. And then as you go through, if you have a slide where there's information down here in the offending uh, right-hand corner, you can click the third button and turn the video off, but they can st still hear the audio narration of things. So it's kind of like having a little mixing studio right inside of your um, software right in here. Um, so I tend to do that. When I build my slides, I usually don't have anything in the bottom right hand or upper left hand corners. Um, but if I get to like a chart or something, I will go through and hide my face so they can see the full chart rather than, you know, have my mug gumming up part of the screen. Again, this is one of those things that you just have to experiment with and test it out to see if it's something you want to use. You don't have to. If you've got Camtasia, use Camtasia. If you've got ScreenFlow, use ScreenFlow. But if you want to do something quick and dirty, doing it inside of the Canvas Studio space is acceptable. Okay. Now, um, I've used it a couple of times. It is, uh, in my experience, very, very simple and straightforward, extremely simple and straightforward. But there's not a lot of editing ability after the fact. 
you know. Um, so like I said, play with it and, and see if you like it. If you do, use it. If you don't, find a tool that's better. All right. Next, we've got video feedback for students. Now, if you've uh, already watched um, Jacob Render Connect's presentation this summer on the speed grader and grading and stuff like that, you may have already seen this. Um, because what you can do inside of the speed grader is, and, and in his presentation, which is fantastic, he talks about the different annotation tools you have in the speed grader to go through and mark up papers, or in this case, for me, students upload their design work into, uh, into Canvas. And I, as long as they upload a JPEG or a PNG or a PDF, I can scribble on it within this space and give them feedback. I can draw on top. I can type. I can point out and leave markers. Like this assignment here, the students had to go through and find an inventor and the objects that person's invented and then build a caricature of them using those products. So this student used Steve Jobs and used different Apple products uh, to, to make his face. And so maybe I wanna tell the student, well, you know what? You need to have a line that comes in here between the glasses and maybe over the ear. Maybe you need to you know, do something better with the hands or something like that. But I could use these tools and, you know, click this and put a, a dot right in the middle of his forehead and tell him, hey, I need you to fix this here or something like that through text. But I'm too lazy or I want to have more of a conversation with the student about this. That I just come right over here and click on this little button down here underneath the comments for this attempt. By clicking on this button right here, it pops open a simple webcam capture uh, dialog box which says, okay, you've got a choice. You can upload recorded media or you can upload uh, pre-recorded media. So I'm gonna record the media. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click start recording and say, hey, test, I really love what you've done here. Here's just some things that I would check on. Hey, you need to connect the glasses uh, up on his face. You need to have a better selection around the phone and maybe do something more to connect the phone, uh, the hands to the phone. All right, I know you've got the skills, go ahead and do it. Then I click stop. And when I say that I'm okay, it says, all right, I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna save it with a name, feedback for student test, click save. Or if I wanna start over, it'll scrap what I've already recorded and allow me to do it again. But if not, I click save. And then there it is, right inside of the comments, there's a little video that's ready for them to, uh, to click and watch. And when they reply, they can reply by text or they can uh, record a video response themselves if they'd like to. Now, I've also done some, from some feedback where in my case with students and software, they may need a little help or they might not have done something right. I can actually go into um, the, uh, my, my basic screen flow or Camtasia software, record a quick little demo and then upload it, you know, using, using the upload media tab rather than the record using the webcam. So you can upload um, different things that way. So I've done, I've done some feedback where the students had a little, I did a little hand drawing demo or something like that so they could, they could see it, okay? Now, Canvas Studio um, has a lot of features that I'm still trying to figure out and still trying to play with. If there were a couple of quick things that I could sum up this uh, quickly, Canvas Studio is a great place to store small little quick videos that I don't wanna be bothered putting into stream. Um, like I said, it may be to introduce a topic or um, you know, clarify an assignment um, or maybe just to cheerlead, you know, maybe you have a module that's all about something and you want to just get them fired up about it. Then yeah, dump a little two or three minute video just right inside of, of, of Canvas Studio and insert that into the first page of the module. Um, you know, if you don't have 
uh, a screen capture, then use the screen capture software to capture little demonstrations or even to capture uh, your, your PowerPoint lectures. Just be known that there's not a super complicated, intricate editing system for the videos you record using the screen capture um, options. So like I said, in Canvas Studio, it's great for those small videos. It's great for things you want to be big brother on and see if they've watched it, how many times they've watched it, um, or, or different things like that. Um, I uh, One time I recorded a video and I put it at the front of a quiz and I always um, password protect my quizzes. So the students must know what the what the password is before they can start it. And I'll hide it in the little one minute introduction. So they have to listen to it. You know, I'll have a student said, Hey, what's the password? And I'll look in the analytics. They haven't watched the video. I'll say, watch the video. And then they will get it and, and go through. So Terry says you can download the video and open it in another video editor like Camtasia. Yeah. And use one of their annotation tools to add text in the larger size. Interesting. Okay, I'll have to play with that and see if that's uh... the funny thing is, is since the, the captions are just text layovers, there should be some way to go through and tell the, the, the text just to be a percentage larger or something like that. So I'll look into that. Well, it's, a, the, it's in a specific kind of text file. So if you've got some kind of editor that can do VTT, I think was the text file that they showed. Is it? I'll send you the I'll send you the link to the to to the uh, to the answer to the question. Okay. So um, a, v, a VTT file is just voice to text. So it's yeah. just a quick little uh, text file that it uses that's time coded. So what they do is as the video is being processed, the server goes through and says, okay, these words were said at this time, these words were said at this time, and just overlays. And as the video plays, it loads that information at that time um into it that's the way that captioning's worked across many many um different things unless and you're familiar it with doesn't TV. look like you can edit you know that you can copy and paste from there hmm. you know like uh, but as a dead as the as the video kind of goes through it puts it in a you know a panel so you can make corrections to it mm -hmm. so because it's only 85 percent accurate yeah uh, until it and even then, it may not be perfectly accurate. I know it, it, it has some technology to learn your voice and what you're saying. So you can go in and make those edits as you're um, going through the video. So my assumption is, one is you can go through, make the videos, copy that text, and then put it into something else. And, uh, and, and uh, like Camtasia has uh, annotation tools that you can use cool. again i'm not really sure if it's going to be worth it yeah it's there's always some roi you know sometimes especially with the quick and dirty things yeah you know, we're not one of the things is we're not and this might be getting into something other than we need to talk about but i'm not quite sure of, of any accessibility rules that we have to have when we put videos up i think just having stream doing a standard breakdown of the captions or having canvas do a standard breakdown of the captions is acceptable um, I don't think it, it needs to be any more than that. That falls under due diligence. So, so if anything, just remember that in Canvas, there's a little button on the side that opens up Canvas Studio. You can upload videos. You can put them into collections. Uh, you can insert those into your assignments. You can have comments. You can track views uh, and different things like that. Um, so, you know, if you took a look at, at one of my screens uh, for this last spring semester, I think I had an average of maybe five or six videos per class. But if you go over into stream, I've got like 30, <laughs> you know, per class, um, because you just keep the larger format stuff over there and the smaller, simpler stuff inside of Canvas Studio. But as I always say, um, you know, play with it, dig around in it try to get it to work. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, find another tool or another way of, of, of doing things. It seems like the video, the, the quizzes inside the video may be a more effective tool than insight in the sense that the student is actually checking him or herself. Yep. True. Thank you. You're welcome.
Yeah, that might be an interesting way to make reviews for exams and, and things like that, ungraded quizzes. Yes, definitely. And stuff like that. Thank you, Michael. Anyone yeah, else have questions? All right. If you have any questions, if you just go into uh, Outlook and type in Clayton, <laughs> uh, Clayton at is my email address. Uh, you can go through and, and ask me any question and I'll see what I can do to help you. Okay. And I Appreciate did put a welcome. link into the text and to the chat for that tutorial on uh, going through and editing your, your, uh, uh, the text in your video. Sweet. Great. Thank cool. you, Tara. Thank you. All righty. Okay. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your summer. We got two and a half weeks left. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.